We got a lot of little Eagles news to talk about today. We got the Eagles making little signings. We got OTAs finishing up tomorrow and mandatory mini camp next week. Will Malcolm Jenkins show up? Ronald Darby speaks. He expects to start week one. But should he? And then we got Zach Brown telling us why this Eagles locker room is special. And Joe Douglas, it looks like he's all but gone at this point. We got a lot to talk about. Let's go. Yep, the cowboy, Mr. McLean. You Americans are all alike. But this time, John Wayne doesn't walk into the sunset with Grace Kelly. Scary Cooper, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> Trails, Hans. Dallas still stinks. You're by the King Ding Ba here, and I got a very, very important message for all you guys out there. You can't forget this. Don't forget it. It's very, very important. The fate of the world depends on it. Okay, you ready? Dallas still stinks. Yesterday, today, and every day, Dallas still stinks. Don't forget it. Now, the Eagles had a small signing today. They signed safety Trey Elston. Don't really know much about him. He was with Buffalo a few times. He was even with the Eagles a while back. I think he was with us for like 10 days. This is a, pretty much a camp body. I don't expect anything more than that. Now, the thing with him is a lot of people think that this may be because Malcolm Jenkins is going to hold out next week for mandatory minicamps because mandatory minicamps start next week. I don't know. I don't know. We'll, we'll see what happens. Um, When Malcolm Jenkins doesn't show up, then we'll worry about it. At this point, it's all speculation. We don't know. But if, the, if he does have a problem with his contract, I hope him and the Eagles can work something out because we need Malcolm Jenkins on the field. He's a leader on this defense, and we need him. So hopefully they work it out and figure it out. But we'll worry about whether or not Malcolm Jenkins is going to hold out or not next week. We'll know after if he doesn't show up for mandatory minicamp. No doubt about it. And is this signing of Elston for him because of him? We'll see. So the Eagles held another public workout today for their OTAs. They got one more OTA tomorrow, and then they're done for the year of OTAs. Mandatory minicamp will start next week. All the players are supposed to be there. Now, you guys probably saw Dallas Goddard today with the one-handed catch. It's been all over Twitter and stuff like that. Looks great. I can't wait to see Dallas Goddard on the field, man. He's going to be awesome. It's going to be a great, great year. Um, one of the main things that I took out of today's OTAs was the interview with Ronald Dar Darby. Ronald Darby was talking about his injury. He was talking about coming back from his injury. Now, you remember, he got hurt in November. Again, this is Dallas. Um, Dallas Cowboy fans, a lot of them like to tell us about how Amari Cooper made some great move on Ronald Darby, and that's why he blew his knee out, which had nothing to do with anything. Had nothing to do with Cooper. He just... He just towards the ACL. It happens. Um, but Darby was saying he's coming back. He, he They were showing him running sprints and his speed was coming back and he felt good and he expects to start week one. Now, he got hurt in November and he wants to start week one. Most players always are very optimistic about their coming back from injury. They want to come back early and, and that's natural. And the thing I take out of it is that, hey, look, he must feel good. He wants to come back week one, so he's on a good trajectory to return. The one other thing that I learned from Carson Wentz's injury last year is don't rush him. Don't rush him. I mean, I was pushing and hoping Carson would be back week one last year. And, and what I've learned, and I learned my lesson, uh, no need to rush these guys. Carson came back week three, and he probably should have come back like week six or week seven or maybe even week eight. Shouldn't have rushed them. And and Darby is the same thing. You're, you're playing a cornerback position where you have to be able to, sh to change direction very quickly at a very high speed. You have to have your speed because you need to be fast as a corner. And for him to come back week one, I, I say if he's not ready, no need to rush him. Um, the other guys can play good, and maybe that's why he wants to come back. Maybe he's worried about losing his starting job because some of our young corners, Avante Maddox, Russell Douglas, Sidney, these guys are... Um, these guys are looking good, and I think that they're all going to be very talented. I think they're going to push Ronald Darby. But Darby does want to come back, and, and I say, don't rush him. I say, 
Come back week four. Come back week five. Don't rush it. Just get healthy. Be healthy. Return 100%. But I do like the fact that he feels good enough that he's going to, he expects to play week one. I think that's a good sign overall. So Darby, he's he's on he's on a trajectory to return uh, and he feels good. I have no problem with it at all. Now, there's another report surfacing um, that the Eagles probably are going to lose Joe Douglas. That they're working financials out and pretty much everything else is set in place. It looks like Joe Douglas is going to go to the Jets. We'll see. Unless something breaks off with money and, and the contract, it looks like he's their guy. And look, I wish Joe Douglas well. I don't like losing him because we had a lot of success since he he came to Philly. But hey, look, I, I like what I hear about this guy, Andrew Berry, and we'll see what he can do with Howie Roseman. Um, it's just that in, in the past, I know there's been issues with, with Howie and GM's wanting to work with him. Joe Douglas and him worked great together. And and, and to see the dysfunction in New York with the Jets, I, I mean, to me, I feel like, why why go there? It's all dysfunctional over there. I mean, you don't want to do that. But, hey, look, he wants, he wants a chance to make a name for himself, and I get it. You go to a place that's dysfunctional like the Jets, and you have success in New York, a big city like that, hey, man, why not? So... Um, it looks like he's going to go. I hope that something falls apart and he doesn't because I don't want to lose Joe Douglas. I know he eventually he's going to go, but I would like to at least keep him around for at least this year, at least through training camp, preseason, when we get injuries and we need to pick off free agents off the street or whatever, or guys get cut off the roster after 53. I want Joe Douglas there because he did a great job. Look at guys like LeBlanc and, and guys like that that he picked up. So I, I don't like losing Joe Douglas, and it looks like this is going to happen. So a lot of little things going on with the Eagles today for sure. Um, now, another thing that I wanted to talk about was Zach Brown. Zach Brown came over from the Washington Redskins. And, you know, we've all, all heard things about the Redskins, their locker rooms, just their organization over the course of the last many, many years. And one of the things he said about being with the Philadelphia Eagles is that the locker room is a very special bunch. It's a very special bunch. There's no clicks. There's no... You know, the linebackers over here, the wide receivers over here. It's none of those kind of things. They all get along. They're all one giant family. And to me, this is a huge, huge thing if you want to be a team that can contend. Because I don't believe you can have a divided locker room and win a championship. I just don't think you can. And if you remember 2017... There was always something talked about how the Eagles locker room was special, how the players all loved each other and respected each other, whether they agreed with each other on politics or issues or whatever it was, they put that all and they would leave it all at the door and together in the locker room, they bonded. They were brothers and they went to war with each other and they won a championship. And it looks like the makings of that same locker room is here this year and that's a good sign. I mean, to be honest with you, I think... It was even there last year. I don't think the Eagles could go on the run that they went on at the end of the year without it. You have to be with each other. You have to believe in each other. And that's why when this whole, you know, players were saying stuff about Carson Wentz and that kind of thing, I thought it was a lot, uh, really overblown, and it wasn't a big deal, and, and it was made to sound a lot worse than what it actually was. The truth of the matter is uh, the Eagles are a very, very, very tight Lock room, tight team, tight organization, and they get along and they're one giant family. And this, this is the first ingredient I think you really need to go ahead and win a Super Bowl. There's going to be ups, there's going to be downs in the in a season, and you have to have that kind of locker room. And the Eagles, from all accounts, and and, and it's not just Zach Brown. From all accounts, this is a very special locker room, and they believe in each other, they love each other as brothers, and they're ready to do whatever it takes. And and when things get hard during the season, they're going to stick together, and they're going to get through it. And this is a great sign on building a team for the future, you know, a championship team. And, And I think Zach Brown is probably very happy that he signed with the Philadelphia Eagles. He looked very happy talking about this. I was excited. He said there's not really... A lot of clicks. Uh, he, his locker room's next to Lane Johnson. Those two had a, be, uh, you know, a beef when he was in Washington. They get along now. They rib each other. They have joke around. They have fun. And this is a great sign of things to come for this Eagles team.
So one other thing I wanted to talk to you guys about um, that I meant to talk about earlier in the video, but I forgot to. Now, that was that during OTAs today, a lot of the beat writers and Eagles reporters were talking about how the Eagles were moving around their secondary guys. They basically were giving Sidney Jones snaps on the outside, Razul Douglas on the other outside, and they were giving Avante Maddox snaps in the slot. Now, is this something that the Eagles are going to go with in the future? I don't know. I don't think so. Or is it more likely that they're probably cross-training these guys and giving them reps at different spots on in the secondary? And I think that's probably what they're doing. And I'll say this about Avanti Maddox. I don't care if you put him on the outside. I don't care if you put him in the slot. I don't care if you put him in safety. Wherever he plays, you have a star on your hands, in my opinion. I think this guy is going to be really, really, really good. And it don't matter where he is. He's a star in the making, as far as I'm concerned. I really am high on Avante Maddox. But I think that most likely this is just cross-training, giving guys... You know, reps at other spots in the secondary. They do this with the offensive line. They do it with the defensive line. And why shouldn't you do it with your secondary? If you can have these guys interchangeable so you can move people around, it, it, it makes them more valuable, especially when you know that there's injuries and things like that happen. So this was, this was, they were talking about this, you know, like, is this something to watch? I, I would keep my eye on it, but I just think they're probably cross-training these guys and, and we'll see what happens. But that's pretty much what was going on today. A lot of little things happening for the Eagles. And I'm excited. I'm excited about the season. I cannot wait. I know you guys can't either. With that said, take care. Talk to you later. And don't be a dingbat.